wife harassed me for caring for my dying father instead of her. Now that he's passed away, she's demanding half my inheritance, even sending her family to threaten me. I, 38M, have always been pretty close to my father. Which has always driven my wife crazy. Especially since for the past year or so, my dad has been extremely ill. He's been dealing with renal disease and congestive heart failure. And since I am his only son, I'm the one who is taking care of him. I make sure to drive him to the clinic three times a week so he can do his dialysis, which is what is keeping him alive since he doesn't have a match for a kidney donor. I was tested and I wasn't a match. I begged my closest family members to go and see if they were a match, however, most of them were reluctant about having one of their kidneys cut out of them and given to someone else. Mostly because what if when they are older and they need a new kidney? If they gave away one of theirs when they were younger then that's what could be the difference between them living and dying. I guess I understood where they were coming from. But if it was me that was a match, I wouldn't in no way hesitate to give my father one of mine to save his life. There are a lot of people who donate their kidneys and live just fine on the one kidney they have left. But no matter how hard I tried to convince my close family members they only just refused to go through with it. It was rather frustrating that these people could be the one person who could keep a sick man from dying way too soon by simply donating a good kidney to save his life. But the worst part about all of it was my wife Maria, 32F. It didn't matter how sick my dad was or how close he was to being on his deathbed. She always had something selfish and rude to say about me going and helping my dying father every day. She couldn't figure out why I would put aside my other responsibilities such as catering to her every need if that's even such a thing. But if I didn't pay attention to her every waking problem or what she had to say I was in for a rude awakening. If she wasn't putting me down for not noticing her new hairstyle or the fact that she rearranged the dining room for the hundredth time. Every day when I walked into my front door, she was there leaning against the hallway wall, just waiting to tear me a new one. And not only that, but she was ready to go to war about where I had been and why I had been gone so long. And of course, my answer was always the same. I was driving my father to the clinic to get his treatments done and then I drove him back home and helped his nurses get him situated. It has gotten so bad that I don't even feel like I can stop and sit down and just converse with my dad before I have to rush home to be interrogated. And this afternoon when I walked into the house my wife was already in a hell of a mood. As soon as I got through the door and hung up my jacket she was instantly by my side asking me why we don't have a new car or a new upcoming business plan to obtain more wealth and be people who are important. What you may not realize is that my father is a very wealthy man, and no, I have never asked him for a dime since I was old enough to work on my own and take care of myself. This means yes, I have struggled greatly and still do to this day. But what my wife doesn't know, well, at least not yet anyway that I took out a pretty substantial loan just to help us get by with the house payment, property taxes, insurance, and utilities. I haven't told her because I know she will weasel her way into getting a hold of as much of the money from the loan as possible and blow it on anything and everything to make herself look like she has money even though she is broke. When I came in the door and went to the kitchen to sit down to go through the bills, Maria followed behind me, and before I knew it, she slammed a piece of paper down in front of me and said, so, when were you going to tell me you took out a huge loan that I could be used for something I need? Or were you just going to hide it from me until it was already gone? She looked at me and then rolled her eyes as she sat down in the chair next to me. Well? What do you have to say? She said clearly angry at me for keeping this money from her. I took a deep breath, and then I told her that I didn't tell her about the loan because I specifically got the loan to pay the overdue bills we have that we have been behind on for the past 5 months. I said, do you enjoy having a house to live in? She was about to protest, but I stopped her and kept going, what about the car you drive, or the water you bathe in, or the electricity that lights up your house at night time, and what about all of the other expensive crap you think you have to have too, I don't know, survive. I stood up and walked into the other room and she, of course, came stomping after me, yelling that since we were married half of the money was hers. And I had to inform her that she wasn't there when I signed for the loan so technically, the loan is in my name, not hers. I said to her, that and you have no means of paying a single penny back against this loan. What on earth makes you think I would give you a single dime of it so you can waste it on absolutely nothing? I would like to be able to keep my home and my car. And I need to be able to take off work for a while to help take care of my dad. He's being placed in hospice care this week because every time they put him through dialysis his heart rate decreases, and his doctors aren't sure how much longer he will be able to handle the treatments. So if you don't mind I'm going to be very busy doing what a man who loves his father would do. And a man who needs to have a home to come back to once everything is said and done. Maria rolled her eyes at me and told me that I was wasting my time worrying about that old man aka my father. She told me that he was so wealthy yet he couldn't even support his broke son who can barely make ends meet. I told her that if she didn't like she could find a new man to mooch off of and boss around because I had had enough of her arrogant attitude towards me taking care of my father. She stopped complaining for a minute and then her behavior changed all of a sudden. She walked up to me and rubbed her hand across my shoulders and whispered, you know, you could always ask your dad to help you while you're struggling. He's almost dead anyway, what else could he possibly do with all of that money he has saved? He can't take it with him when he dies. I was stunned by her selfish money hungry, gold digging way of thinking. 
I walked past her into our bedroom and grabbed her prized possessions which happened to be a pair of suitcases from one of those tops designers I honestly don't even know how to pronounce their names, but I laid them out on the bed and I ushered my wife into the bedroom and pointed at the suitcases and asked her which one she was going to place her favorite dresses and which one was going to hold her only excuse for a collection of bells she had collected from all over the world with her somewhat rich family. She had to think about what I was suggesting before it finally sunk in. You're kicking me out. She squeaked so loud the next door neighbor's dog started barking. I told her I was done with her attitude and her bossy way of trying to control every aspect of my life. I told her she wouldn't get much in the divorce but she could expect to hear from my lawyer within a few weeks. But until then she needed to start packing. Maria called her family who all showed up at my house where they all started going through everything in my home. It didn't matter if it was clearly not Maria as they were going through everything. They tore apart my home from top to bottom. By the time all of Maria's stuff was packed and placed in the moving truck, Maria's father Carlos, 54M, found me in the kitchen trying to put all of my dishes and pots and pans back into my cabinets. Carlos cornered me in front of the sink. He was so close to me that I could smell the garlic on his breath from the Italian food they had all ordered while at my home to pack up Maria's belongings. Carlos stared me in the eyes for a good 35 seconds before he told me that I was making a big mistake. He told me that his family didn't believe in divorce and that what I have done to his daughter was unforgivable. I tried to explain to him that his daughter didn't value family the way I did. And I asked Carlos if he was sick and dying wouldn't he expect his only child if he only had one offspring to help to take care of him in his time of need? Carlos paused and thought about what he was about to say. He clicked his tongue and told me that he would expect his daughter to help him not his son. Because women were put here to help with medical situations, not men. I wasn't surprised by his answer because after all they were a Latin family and they do things much differently than my Caucasian family would. I told him I was sick of his daughter always making me feel like I was doing something terrible by helping my sick and dying father in his last days. I couldn't sit by and continue to let her treat me like a criminal for doing what was right in the first place. Carlos leaned in close to me and whispered in my ear, we will never forget what you have done to our sweet Maria. You will remember this family. I pulled away from him and told him to get him and the rest of his family out of my house. After they left, I went back to my normal routine of picking up my father and taking him to the clinic for dialysis and treatment. And afterward, I would take him home and spend as much time with him as possible. This whole time my two children have been in the background witnessing their mother treat me awfully and question me for taking care of my sick dad. I had to keep explaining to them that their mother didn't value the time that spent with loved ones especially if it couldn't benefit her in some way. And no, this isn't the first time I've had to explain to my children why their mother acts the way she acts. She has learned some pretty unruly behavior from her entire family over the course of her life growing up. And I wasn't aware of this side of her until after we had already had two children and been married. It was like once she knew I had been trapped she could finally be who she really is and force me to either live with it or move on to live my own life without her overwhelming selfish tendencies. Update it's been a week since I filed for a divorce against my wife and she has stubbornly refused to sign the paperwork, however, I was able to trick her into signing the paperwork by promising her that I would pay alimony. What she doesn't know is that the alimony won't be very much. But it got the job done. And of course, after about two months of her getting payments, she realized that she was getting practically nothing. But that's the least of my worries. My father has been placed in hospice recently and it's not looking good. I just got done visiting him and I've been praying non-stop that he will pull through but I know he's probably not going to. I decided to go to bed early that night and in the middle of the night around 3 AM, I received a phone call. It was from the overnight doctor that usually checks on my dad. He called to tell me that my dad had passed away in his sleep. I was devastated, I wasn't with him when he passed. He was all alone and that breaks my heart. I couldn't even come close to falling back to sleep that night. And the next morning when I got up there was a knock on my door. I put my robe on and reluctantly answered it, it was a man in a really nice suit with a briefcase in his right hand. I asked him what he needed and he told me he was my father's lawyer and a good friend of his. And that he was here to help me with my father's funeral and discuss my father's will. I let him in and we sat down at the kitchen table and he laid out some paperwork for me to sign. I asked him if my father had put anyone else in his will and his lawyer told me that I was the only beneficiary and that everything that my father owned was now mine, which included his vast wealth. I was taken aback by this information. I mean I knew that my dad was rich and I was his only son but I hadn't even considered that I would be the one to inherit all of his money. But when I really thought about it, no one else in the family ever visited him the whole time he was sick so it made perfect sense that he would leave it to me. So, I went from being in a large amount of debt to a millionaire in as little as 6 hours. I immediately thought about my ex-wife and what she would do if she found out about this. But I just ignored my gut feelings and signed the paperwork and the lawyer left. I knew I had to start planning my father's funeral but before I could even start looking for a funeral home there was another knock on my door. And when I looked through the front window and saw my ex-wife standing there my stomach sank. How could she possibly already know about everything that just happened? I sighed and opened the door. She pushed her way inside and got straight to business. She went and sat on the sofa and crossed her legs and her arms over her chest. I looked at her and said, 
So what do I owe this pleasure of seeing you so early this morning? She rolled her eyes and said, I know your dad just passed away, and I also know you inherited all of his money. Half of the money belongs to me. And you're going to give it to me or you're going to regret ever meeting me. I couldn't help but laugh out loud at the absurd statement she just made. I told her she was out of her mind if she thinks she was getting a single dime of the money I just inherited. I told her that I didn't have that money when we divorced so she has absolutely no right to any of it. Her face turned so red I thought she was going to start melting. She stood up and rushed towards me, and I put my hands up and said, don't even think about putting your hands on me. She took a step back and told me that this wouldn't be the last I hear about this. And I knew exactly what that meant. Her family was going to be harassing me until I gave in to her demands and that wasn't going to happen. I told her she needed to get the hell out of my house and with that she left. But before she left, she asked me if she could talk to the kids. And I told her that they were sleeping and they don't know about that grandfather passing away yet and I wasn't going to let her be the one to tell them. And then she hit me with, I'm taking you to court to get custody of both of them. You don't deserve to be their legal guardian. I told her how she plans on taking care of them. She has no money to even afford a place of her own. Here they have their own rooms and I have all the money in the world to take care of them. So go ahead and try Maria. You will lose and you will look like a fool. Update, it's been about a month since Maria showed up at my home. I was able to lay my dad to rest in one of the best cemeteries in town. And yesterday I went out to the cemetery to place new flowers on his grave but when I got there his tombstone had been completely destroyed. Chunks of stone were laying all over his resting place. And on the ground was a placard. I bent down and read what it said and I was shocked by what I read. It read, the money belongs to her until you give what's rightfully hers. Expect to keep having to buy a new tombstone for your father's grave. Sincerely, the family. I kicked the placard so hard it bursts into a thousand little pieces. How could anyone defile someone's grave like this? I made sure I phoned the police and reported the foul play. They told me they would keep an eye on the cemetery at night to see if they can catch them in the act. I immediately went and ordered a new tombstone to replace the broken one. I was furious yet not surprised. Maria's family was insane, they always have been. And I knew this wasn't going to be the only run-in with them I would have. I cleaned the tombstone up the best I could. And then contacted the right people to have it replaced. I messaged my ex-wife Maria and told her she was really immature defiling a man's grave who just passed away over money that did not belong to her. And of course, she played dumb like she didn't know what I was talking about even though the note clearly indicated that the reason the tombstone was ruined was that I hadn't given Maria half of my inheritance. And there was no way in hell that I was going to give in and give it to her. I don't care what they do to me or to my dad's grave. He would never forgive me if I gave in to her demands and gave her his hard-earned money. I tried to put it out of my mind and relax once I got home. I planned on ordering a pizza for the night and watching a movie with my kids. But my son decided he was going to go to the races with a couple of his friends and my daughter asked me if she could spend the night at her friend Jessica's. Of course, I gave in and let them go and have fun. There's no reason in making them sit around with me and sulk over the day's events. And boy was a glad I'd let them leave for the night because the next thing I know a brick of some kind came flying through my living room window. And before I could get up to investigate there was another brick thrown through the window on the side of the house. Which is just what I need since the next plan I had was to rent out my house and move the kids and myself into my dad's house. I took off outside to try and catch a glimpse of who was vandalizing my home and no surprise it was Maria's brother Javier, 39M. I could clearly see his long black hair flowing through the wind as he sprinted away from my house and then got into what was clearly his black Kia. I shook my head in disbelief. You'd think they would try a little bit harder at concealing themselves if they are going to commit crimes. I walked back inside and picked up one of the bricks and on the back of one of them was a piece of paper that was tapped to the brick, it read, the money or else. I rolled my eyes and tossed it out on the patio. I grabbed my phone and called the police and made a police report about the incident. A police officer came by and took a look at the damage in the bricks, especially the one with the message. And of course, I had to explain to him about my ex-wife and her family being obsessed with me giving her half of my inheritance and the fact that they are doing things to intimidate me into giving her the money. I told the officer that this probably won't be the last time I have to call the police because of them. And of course, I was right about that. Update hello, guys. I apologize for leaving the update in the middle, but here is another one for you. So, ever since the brick throwing episode I've since fixed the broken windows and began moving everything into my father's house. The kids are pretty excited about moving into their grandfather's house. Mainly because the bedrooms are huge and they'll both have their own bathroom. Soon I'll have new tenants living in our old house that I'm going to be renting too. Maria and her family have no clue that we are moving I would like to keep it that way. But my luck they will find out somehow and continue to make me miserable. And of course, just by saying such things I jinxed myself. Because after we got everything moved into my dad's house I ended up getting an unwanted visitor at around 3am one morning. I happened to wake up in the middle of the night and was thirsty so I went downstairs to go get a drink of water. The kids were sound to sleep upstairs thank god, when I walked into the kitchen there was a man standing in the doorway with a baseball bat. 
And before I could realize what I was seeing he was charging at me and hit me right in the side, which knocked the air clean out of me. I stumbled to the side and looked up and the moonlight coming into the windows in the kitchen was just enough light to illuminate the culprit's face. And I recognized him immediately. It was Maria's older brother Jerome, 42M. Before he could take another swing, I ducked and charged him ramming him into the cabinets and knocking down all sorts of canned goods to the floor. All I could think about was the kids waking up and coming downstairs. I hurried up and put Jerome in a headlock and told him I would put him to sleep if he didn't take his baseball bat and get the hell out of my house. I told him if he ever came back, I would make sure he could never walk again. And with that, I let him go and shoved him out the back door before closing and locking it behind him. I had to catch my breath for a minute after being knocked in the side so hard. I hadn't really thought about one of them breaking into my house in the middle of the night to attack me, but I guess I should be ready for just about anything at this point. I called the same police officer I dealt with about the brick incident and he came by and took my statement. He told me to make sure I put up some security cameras in case something like this happened again. I told him he was lucky my kids didn't wake up and come downstairs because I probably would have done a whole lot more damage than I would have wanted to. Because no one messes with my kids. I don't care who it is. The police officer took my statement and then left and once again I had a hard time falling asleep that night. What's funny is what happened next because Maria's brother knew we had moved to my dad's new house but Maria was nothing but clueless. I guess I'll start where I left off, Maria had no clue we had moved out of my house to my dad's house and she ended up showing up at my old house where I now have new tenants living. She knocked on the door and the wife of the man I rented the house to answer the door. My ex-wife started freaking out about why I wasn't there and if she was my new girlfriend or something. The man's wife had to explain to her that they were tenants and that I had moved away. But Maria wouldn't listen, she told the woman she was a liar and I was inside of the house somewhere and that I needed to come out. Maria even went as far as to slap the woman when she told her that I was not there and that she needed to leave. Maria told her that if I wasn't there then she needed to tell her where I moved to, but since Maria slapped this woman, she slammed the door on Maria's face and called the authorities who came and arrested Maria for battery and trespassing. I wasn't at all surprised when I heard what Maria had done. She has been a gold digger her whole life or for as long as I've known her. If it's not about money then it's about what she can get from someone. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's a value. And the fact that she'll go as far as attack an innocent woman for no reason at all tells me I made the right choice divorcing her when I did. I don't know what I ever saw in her, to be honest. Love truly is blind. And her brother Jerome is getting a few years in jail too for breaking into my home and attacking me with that baseball bat. Her family has got to learn something from all of this. But chances are they will keep operating the same way they always have. If it benefits them then they will do anything and everything to make sure they get whatever they can no matter what it takes to get a hold of it. Even if it means spending time behind bars. Which quite frankly suits them really well if you ask me. And I can promise you this, that this woman will never see a dime of my money not even when I'm long gone and dead. I don't care what plan she comes up with next, it will never get her the riches she so separately thinks she deserves but will never be capable of having.